Here we have the equation of a circle, x squared plus y squared equals 25. And let's say we wanted to take its derivative. Well, first of all, how do we take its derivative? And then secondly, once we do, can we make sense of it? So let's do that. So one thing that we could do to take this derivative is we could actually solve for y. And we would get y equals plus or minus the square root of 25 minus x squared. And then we could just take this derivative, we'd have two, two values actually, y would be both plus and minus depending on what x is. But that's kind of messy and, and I don't want to do it that way, so we're going to do it a different way. We're going to take this derivative implicitly. So what we do is we're just going to take the derivative term by term and the derivative of x squared is just 2x and then the derivative of y squared is actually a chain rule. It's going to be, we're going to do the outside power, repeat the inside, and then multiply by the derivative of the inside. And the derivative of y is just dy dx. So we have to multiply by dy dx. And then the derivative of, of 25 is just 0. Okay, and if you're confused about how we got to this term, go back and watch the last video. I, I explain all about that. Okay, now we're just going to do some simple algebra, subtract the 2x from both sides. We get 2y times dy dx is equal to 2x. Oh, sorry, negative 2x. We subtracted it divide by the 2y and we get the derivative that's what we're after after all dy dx that's what we want the derivative dy dx is equal to negative x negative x over y so what does this mean well it means the the derivative the change the, uh, the rate of change of y with respect to x is depends on both x and y. And here we're assuming y can be solved for. It's some, it's some function with x's. And in fact, it, it can be because we know that y could equal plus or minus the square root of 25 minus x squared. So we know that for any one single x, we're going to have two y values. And, and of course we know that because it's a circle. So let's say we just pick x to be here. Let's just get some intuition about what's going on. If we pick x to be there, well then we're going to have a positive y and a negative y. And what this, uh, what, what the derivative is telling us, it's telling us the slope at both these points, depending on which point we choose. So if we choose the, the positive x, and the positive y, what's the slope of that point? Well, hopefully you can see that that slope clearly is negative. And so this equation makes a lot of sense because in our example we have negative and then we chose a positive x and a positive y and we know that when we choose a positive x and a positive y the slope is negative. Well, it's a negative number times a positive number of course is a negative number. So already this equation seems to make sense. When we choose a, a positive x and a negative y, well then we're going to get a positive slope. So again, if we just kind of analyze just the signs of what's going on, well then we have a negative times a positive x over a negative y, well this is a negative, and a negative times a negative, well this of course is positive. So when we have the positive x and the negative y, the slope is positive. And you can do the same thing, in fact I encourage you to, for a negative x. What happens over here and, and down here? Okay. So that's that. And then what, what an interesting thing, thing that happens is what if y is 0? So in other words, what if we just say x squared plus you know, 0 y equals 25. So in other words, we're at this these outer points. x equals plus or minus 5. 
So actually, let me let me erase all this other stuff here. Okay. So we're at these outer points. Well, what's the slope there? The slope is a vertical line. Or, or I should say, there is no slope because what happens is you, you end up with this vertical line here, this vertical tangent line. And that also makes a lot of sense according to our equation because we'd have negative x divided by 0. And we know, of course, that's undefined, and so is the slope of a vertical line. The slope of a vertical line is undefined. So hopefully this, this derivative dy dx is equal to negative x over y is starting to make some sense to you yeah, that, yeah, that really does give you the slope at every point on this circle. As long as you remember that y, for every 1x, you're going to get two y values, a positive y and a negative y. Okay. So this is uh, an example of why of of using implicit differentiation. We're going to do some more examples and we're going to see how it can help us take the derivative of things like the natural log of x. Okay. See you in the next video.